everyone, this is The Jeff Cowan coming to you from thejeffcowan.com with my weekly podcast entitled Success in Professional Sales and Life in General. Welcome back to all of you who keep coming back and a big thank you to those of you who have told your friends about this podcast because our audience is really growing and I'm being told the reason it's growing is because the solutions I'm giving to you every week are working. And of course they would work. I wouldn't bring you stuff that doesn't work. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring you some more techniques today that work. Now, where I get the, get for those of you that are new, if you're wondering, well, how does he come up with these topics? Where does he get them from? I listen to you. You text me, you email me, you call me up, and I listen to what your concerns are, and then I develop podcasts around them. And so what I've heard here recently from a lot of you is this. Jeff, I'm really struggling to get upsells on my product. My product comes with a lot of upsell capabilities and possibilities, and I'm really struggling to get any at all. Can you help me out? Well, the answer is yes, I can help you out. Some of you have been saying, you know, I'm really struggling to get the sell, or I'm really struggling, this is another common one, I'm really struggling just to get people to continue to listen to me throughout the process or throughout my presentation. Well, if you're doing that, it's probably because you're leaving out a critical step. Now, and the critical step is this. I've been really lucky throughout my career because I've gotten the opportunity to work with all types of products, all types of services, all types of industries. I mean, I've been asked to write selling programs and have written selling programs for some of the smallest, most insignificant, cheapest products you could ever imagine, all the way up to on the flip side to some of the largest, biggest products that are extremely expensive and everything in between. Now, when you do that, what you discover is, it's been really good for me, is what I've discovered is there's a lot of similarities from sales to sales. If you have the very basics down, I really believe you can sell any product. And one of the things I've learned about customers over the years is when they're looking at a new product or service, I've learned that they want to be reassured very early and very often that they're in the right place, talking to the right person, they can get the job done. Now, let me repeat that. I've discovered that very early in the presentation and throughout the presentation, they want to know that they're in the right place, talking to the right person, they can get the job done. And, and they want to be reassured. All right? So how do you do that? It's real simple. I've got a simple word track called the assurance, not insurance, but the assurance word track. Now, where does it come into play? Where it comes into play, by the way, is as critical as using the technique itself. So let's walk, let me walk you to it. Uh, you get the customer on the telephone, they respond to a text, they respond to an email, they walk in your front door, right? So the first thing you're going to do when you start off your presentation is you're going to greet them. So you, you give your name, you get their name, you thank them for, for, for talking to you, right? Immediately following that, you go into what I call the investigative part of the sale. That's when you ask them why, why they're talking to you or why they came in, what it is they're looking for, what they want the product to do, how they're going to use the product and the like. Now, some of you have really long processes there where you might ask 10, 15 questions. Some of you might only be two or three, but it's called the investigative part of the sale. What do you want to do with our product? Why do you want our product, right? Now, immediately following that, but before you talk about your product, before you talk about what your product does, before you talk about anything that even halfway resembles an upsell, once you find out why they're talking to you, why they want your product, what they're going to do with it, how they're going to use it, immediately following that part, that's where you use the reassurance, or the assurance, I'm sorry, the assurance word track. Now, I'm going to share that word track with you here in just a second, but I want to talk to you about this. This book, what I've learned from attending over 35 Indy 500s, it's got lessons in sales, motivation, leadership, management, and life in general. It is becoming a national bestseller as we're sitting here. I mean, this thing is flying off the shelf. It's a book where what I do is I talk about on-track on activities I've seen happen at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and what I believe the driver or the person that I'm talking about, what their motivation was, and I show you how to apply what they did to your life by giving you similar stories from my life and techniques to become better. I mean, people love this. You don't have to like sports. You don't have to even like racing to love this book. I mean, it's literally falling off the, uh, really fly, flying off the shelves. Now, it comes in a paperback. It comes in hardcover. You can get it at Amazon.com. You can get it at Barnes & Nobles, all the normal places, Apple, Google, wherever, you get it there. It's been so popular, as a matter of fact, you can now get it in a tablet form, so you can download it right from the internet uh, if, if you want it. Uh, we can, we're out, we've got an audio book of it coming out here very shortly. I've even got a video program coming out with it that's going to be really fun. I mean, boy, the, the early takes we're doing on that are really, really fun. But go to, go to thejeffcowan.com if you don't want to go one of those other places, thejeffcowan.com or simply dial 1-800-248-2931. We'll get you set up the book or go to Amazon or wherever you like to buy books. It's a great book. It's doing well. And also watch for this. 
here over the next couple of weeks, we're going to start taking pre-orders on my next book that's due out here in about the next two months, maybe three months. It's called The Forgotten Rules of Professional Salesmanship. That one, the early reviews coming back on that from the publishers and stuff is out of this world. So there is my commercial. Oh, by the way, I wanted to say one more thing. If you're a company and you're looking for somebody to come in and maybe do a workshop for you, you're a company and maybe you just want a quick sales meeting, you're getting ready to go to a convention, you want a keynote address, you want somebody to deliver a, a, a something along those lines, I do that all the time. I love doing it. And, man, I've got all kinds of presentations and all types of product, pro, uh, product, uh, uh, topics and stuff. But the one that I've, I've created, i got two I've created around this book, what I've learned from attending over 3,500, I mean, it is a blast to do, and people love that. So if you need a, a keynote address or a special occasion coming up, call me. Uh, I'd love to do it. So back to this. Uh, you remember I told you a lot of you are calling in, you're texting in, you're telling me that you're having trouble getting upsells. You're having trouble having people uh, continue to listen to you throughout your entire presentation and sometimes just getting the sell itself. Well, I found a lot of times that's because you've not reassured the customer that they're even talking to the right person in the right place and get the job done. So I told you that the key thing to do is after you greet your customer, you ask your inve investigation question, you're going to use a technique that I like to call the assurance technique. So again, I've greeted the customer. I've asked them, you know, now it's time. You're here to look at the product. Why are you looking at it? What do you want to do? How are you going to use it? Immediately after that, I'm going to use the assurance word track. Here we go. Mr. Customer, now that I know what you need, why you need it, and what your plans are for our product, I want you to rest assured that I have exactly what you're looking for and exactly what you need. You know you're really smart to be talking to us because I am going to get you taken care of. Now, when you say that, you will see people, no kidding, this simple thing, because you say, well, how does that convince them you got what you need? Because you told them. It, you know, sometimes we overcomplicate the selling process, and it's the simplest things that get you to sell. Simply by you telling them it's the great, you're, you're talking to the right person in the right place and get it done, you will see them do this. Watch. As soon as you say that to a customer, as soon as you say this, Mr. Customer, now they know what you need and why you need it, what, you plan on, what your plans are for a product, I want you to rest assured that I have exactly what you're looking for and exactly what you need. You know, you're really smart to come in here and talk to me because I'm going to get you taken care of. As soon as you say something like that, if you watch them, you'll see their facial muscles relax. You'll see them sometimes even drop their shoulders. You'll see the tension leave their body and mo most of the times even say things like this. That's the best news I've heard all day long. I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm so glad that I'm talking to somebody who can help me solve my problems. Now, it, it's, it's not a question of if they're going to buy, but what they're going to buy. And now when you're presenting your product after you say that, you can actually talk about the upsells as you go through it and, and they will buy it and you will keep their attention, especially if throughout the presentation you say things like this. Now, I wanted to show you this because, and you know, Mr. Customer, again, like I told you, you're smart to come in here because nobody's able to do this. Or, you know, by talking to us, I can show you how to do this, and you're really smart to come in here. I have exactly what you need. You can't say that enough. Now, if you're a little bit confused on exactly what I'm talking about here, how it's used, let me give you an example of something that happened with me and the wife here recently. Um, I got some great news here recently, and that's this. The last one just moved out. Now if, none of you, now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you will one day once you have your kids. But the last one of our kids just moved out, right? Now, this was the first time in years that me and the wife have lived alone. So we drop our son off at the airport. He's flying over to Boston. He's going to live there, right, and, and, and work over there. He's got a job. We go home, and we sit down, and we get ready to watch a movie, and TV goes out. I tell her, hey, we don't need a TV. He watched it more than us. This is the first time we've been in the house alone for a long time without anybody else living with us. You know, we don't need a, 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 a TV. We'll get to re-know each other, right? That kind of stuff. Well, the next morning we got up, now realizing we've got to talk to one another, we were on a mission. We're going to go buy a new TV. As a matter of fact, we not only went out and bought a TV for the, new, for the family room, we bought one for every room, including the hallways, just in case. Just kidding. When we went out to look for the TV, living out here in Southern California, we have a lot of options. You know, we have Best Buy, we have Costco, we have all those types of things, but I'm not always the most astute when it comes to technology, and I'm not always the most astute when it comes to hanging TVs. And this, this TV, when we get it, we wanted a great big one, all right? We wanted it on the wall, and I knew that I was going to need help with all that, so we elected to, instead of go to those places, which there's nothing wrong with them, we decided to go to some, some boutique shops, if you would. So we went to four or five of the, and boutique shop meaning that they have all these different things, all the accessories and, and, and whatever. Well, me and the wife drive around, we go to about two or three of these, and it was the fourth one that we walked into that I knew we were going to buy a TV that day. Now, here's how I knew that. Gentleman comes up, he sees us standing in front of the proverbial wall of 50 televisions, looking like we're lost. He simply comes up and, and, and he says, 
Hi, my name is Stan. I work here and I, I can help you out. It looks like it looks like you're looking for a TV. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, we're looking for a TV. Well, you know what? You're in the right place because I can help you out. But first, let me get some information. Again, my name is Stan and your name is? Well, my name is Jeff and this is Candy. And your last name's Cowan, C-O-W-A-N, Cowan. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Cowan, uh, I need to ask you some questions if you're looking for a television because you can see here we've got 50 of them. And after I ask these questions, I'm sure I'll be able to narrow, narrow this down to two, maybe three TVs that I can not only help you out with and, and, and get help you get, but have it hanging on your wall before the end of the day. All right, so let me ask you, uh, how, what, are you going to hang the TV? Is it going to sit someplace? Is it going to, uh, what are you watching? Do you watch sports? Do you watch movies? Regular TV? So he goes through his investigative questions. Immediately following that, he looks right at me and Candy, and he says this, Mr. and Mrs. Cowan, now that you've answered these questions for me, I've got some great news for you. I want you to rest assured that now that I know what, what you're looking for, how you're going to use it, that you're going to hang the TV, that you're wanting something that's at least 80, 80 inches and, it's going to be, and, and all that stuff, I want to let you know that I not only have one, but I have two or three TVs that I know that you're going to fall in love with that will work for you and I can have them hanging on your, on your wall before the end of the day. My wife looked right back at him. She dropped her shoulders and she said, you know, that's the best news I've heard all day long because I don't think I could go to one more of these shops and look at one more TV. I knew at that exact moment that we had bought a TV. I didn't know which one, didn't know how much, didn't know what it was going to do, what it was going to look like, but I knew right then and there we'd bought a TV. Now, here's what's masterful about him doing that. Now, I know I'm using a television as an example, but this works with any products. I do this all the time with, my, with, with our products, you know, reassure people, right, that they're in the right place. By him doing that, he not only had to, sh he, he, he went from just having to show us the TV and getting us landed on one, he already has had us convinced that the ones he was going to show us were, were going to like and, and, and that, 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 that they were going to work for us. So in a sense, we were already sold on the TV. So that being the case, instead of him saying, what do you think about this TV? What do you think about this TV? And then once we selected all that stuff, and then he started talking about the many accessories you can buy with a TV. Because it's no longer good enough just to buy a TV, right? As he presented them, he could get the upsell as he went. Because instead of saying, here's a TV, here's a TV, he'd say, this is one of the TVs that I have selected for you based on how you said you're going to use the TV. You said you watch a lot of movies. Is that right? Well, this is the, this is the such and such television, and here's, what it, here's, here's how it looks, and here's how it sounds. But while you're looking at this, Mr. and Mrs. Cowan, and, and while you're listening to it, I want to show you something else. Did you know that if you take, this, is, this has got the standard cables that are hooked up to it as it comes out of the box, but did you know if you put monster cables on it, it would do this to the picture, and he pops, the, pushes the button, and ooh, that's cool. And if you get the deluxe monster cables that does even this, ooh, that's even cooler. And Mr. Customer, or Mr. and Mrs. Cowan, what you're listening to is the standard speakers that come in the back of the TV, but do you know if you wanted to make it stereo and did this, it would sound like this, that's cool. And if you wanted surround sound with five speakers, it'd sound like this, that's cooler. And if you wanted to get the latest and the greatest with seven speakers and surround sound, it could do this. Now, by him doing that, he didn't have to wait to the end because, see, it was already assumed we were going to buy a TV. Here I told us he had one. By him telling us that we were in the right place talking to the right person and he had what we needed, we were already sold on the TV. So as he was making his presentation, he could already talk about the upsells and all the add-ons and all that stuff because, again, he knew we were going to get a TV. And in his mind, it wasn't about selling the TV. There's no money in TVs anymore. Most of them are advertised as lost leaders. The real money is in the surround sound, the amplifiers, the subwoofers, the, the, the extra cables, and all the extra mounting and lighting and all that stuff. We walked in there prepared to spend about $1,500 on a TV, and we walked out of that, that gentleman's showroom an hour later and had committed to $4,500 worth of all kinds of stuff, and we had that TV and all that stuff set up by the end of the day that day. How did he do that? He did it because very early in the presentation, after he greeted us, after he asked his investigative questions, he reassured us we were in the right place, talking to the right person that could get it done, and then throughout his presentation, he reminded us throughout the presentation several times that we were not only in the right place, talking to the right person that could get it done, but we were smart to come to him. We were smart to talk to him. We were smart because we knew quality when we saw it. If you're struggling getting up sales, you're struggling having people keeping people's attention, you're struggling to get the sale, it could be something as simple as this. Take a look at your presentation. Are you just greeting the customer? They're telling you to look at something and you just start talking about it? Or do you reassure them first? Because if you reassure them first, you convince them you have what they need. 
Don't listen to anything else you got to talk about. Hey, my name's Jeff Cowan from thejeffcowan.com, bringing you my weekly podcast entitled Success in Professional Sales and Success in Life in General. I'm glad you listened today, and I want you to come back next week because I'm, I'm going to have another great topic and some great stuff for you to do that's going to help you right now in your selling career and make you the most successful salesperson that you can be. But between now and next week, I want you to do me a favor, as always. I want you to go out and find as many prospects as you can. I want you to show them your product, get them excited about your product so that they buy your product and you earn a ton of commission and get to live the life that you so deserve because between now and next week, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Make it a great one and enjoy your summer. It's a great summer out there right now. Take care.